Coming to the stage is a digital entertainment pioneer, actor, producer, model, and comedian who leveraged massive success on Vine into a thriving career in Hollywood. He made TV Guide's Freshman 15 list for breakout stars and has not looked back since. Please welcome to the stage Melvin Gregg. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Melvin, thank you so much for pulling up. Uh, Me and Melvin are great friends. Uh, Our our budding relationship uh, is, is blooming, and I'm very happy. Uh, about it. So let's go all the way back okay. prior to LA. You from Portsmouth, mm-hmm. Virginia. I appreciate okay. you knowing how to say it. I've been now, wow. I've been to seven cities. Yeah. I learned. I, my first show out there, I pronounced hey, hey Portsmouth. Portsmouth. And they were like, uh-uh, it was tough. Uh-uh, uh-uh, it was yeah. tough. It's Portsmouth. Yep, with Virgi- an I. With <laughs> and two F's at the end. How was it like growing up uh in the seven? There's a lot of famous city- people from there, athletes, yes. actors, musicians. What was it like coming from such a rich, talented area? Um, I mean, I don't really have too much to compare it to. Mm. You know, that's all I knew. I lived there my whole life until I moved to L.A. in what, 2011. But it was cool, man. Um, if you're from there, a lot of times you don't really get out. And if you ain't from there, there's no reason to really come there. That's it's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's a hub. The people that you grew up around, like your parents know their parents, their mm-hmm. grandparents know their grandparents, like, Everybody know each other. When I look back now, like at my friends back home, they all still hang together. Really? Like from first grade to now, like it's the same friend group because nobody really leaves and nobody comes there. So wow, it's it's, uh, it's crazy in that way. But it was cool, man. I guess you would call it. It's not inner city because it's not a big city. Yeah, but it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, very low income. Yeah. Like the whole city, <laughs> like growing up, the whole like downtown. Uh, it was just projects, probably like nine projects, and that was it. They, mm. they didn't turn them down since, but yeah, that's pretty much what it was. So you grew up, you know, in one of the seven cities, and you're one of seven, the only boy in a family of seven. Yeah. How was that like? Did you ever wish back. you had a, a one brother? So it's like a mixed seven. It's not a conventional family seven. It's okay. like a hood seven. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> It's like my dad had three different baby mamas. Well, he had a wife and two baby mamas. He's still married to this day, and his wife was the first one. Oh, wow. So, yeah, he had three girls with his wife, and then he uh, he left his wife, I think. I'm sorry if the fact's not right. <laughs> he left his wife, um, and he went to prom with his second baby mama. He was 38. She was 18. Crazy. That's another story. Anyway, he had two twins with her. Oh, wow. Um, and then... I said that like you could have one twin. Right. He had, t- <laughs> he had twins with her. Yeah. And then he had me and my sister right after. Mm. It was crazy. The twins grew up right across the street from us. And y'all knew y'all related? They knew I ain't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. My daddy was like, they ain't your sisters. <laughs> and they'll see me at, on the school bus. It's like, love your daddy. That's my daddy too. I'm like, shut up. No, he ain't. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> I ain't know no better. I was just following my dad. Like, that nigga was ignorant. You know right. what I mean? I love him, but it is what it is. Right. So, so the seven is kind of mixed up like that. But uh, further answer your question, if I wish I had a, uh, a brother, I, I, I did. I used to wish my little sister was a, a boy. But then as I got older, I'm happy mm-hmm. that she wasn't because I feel like he would have just got me in a lot of trouble. Right, 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 mm-hmm. right. Okay, so a hood seven, by the way, is very good. You said a hood seven. I was like, oh, yeah, a hood yeah, seven. Yeah, Everybody knows different. hood seven. Uh, so is it true around age seven, you started to record yourself and reenact the movie Friday with your cousins, giving them a script, characters, and all that stuff? Doing research. Hey, man. Hey, man. Marquita Bradley. Marquita Bradley. That's that day. She going to know that stuff. <laughs> she, she do. Um, I, I wasn't recording. We ain't had no recording apparatuses. Or oh, you in, was reenacting. In 95? Yeah, I would reenact that. I love Friday. Uh, I memorized the whole movie. I still have, like, a really good scripted memory, but, like, I don't know where I leave my keys at half the time. Yeah. Um, but if I read it, I remember it. Got um, it. Or hear it, I could remember it. So, yeah, yeah, uh, I used to reenact Friday, and I used to like to do it because they used to let me cuss. <laughs> with the cuss words, and... Um, <laughs> I remember one time I got my cousins, I, I signed everybody roles and it was like, you Debo, you Ezell, you Felicia, I'll be Smokey and Craig. Like, <laughs> Are you going to take top yeah. billing twice? Yeah, because it, it was my play. <laughs> um, I put it together. And then I remember they couldn't get their lines right. 
And I'm the type that really get agitated sometimes, and um, you can always see how I'm feeling on my face. Like, I don't have a poker face. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm frustrated, you see it. I just had to fire everybody and just do the show myself. Like, it's, it's a one-man show they now. They can't even cut it in a, in a reenactment that ain't they being could, filmed. They was missing lines, and it was my cue lines. I'm like, you can't be improv -ing. Like, it's, people know what it is. Debo needs to come at this point. Ask what you got on this 40. You need to, you know what I mean? So you were duck. Yeah. They, they messing up my music. Yeah, they right. messing up my music, <laughs> man. I can't. I want to push them off the piano. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So now the interesting thing is, is, is you're an introvert. Yeah. But you are. You work in a world where it's all performance based. Yeah. How did you? When did you realize that? And and is that difficult to be in in this industry with that personality type? Um. It, it can be. I, I learned the term uh, Grace Bias. I just did a film with an amazing actress, um, and she was telling me about a. I might I might have said said it backwards, but an introverted, extra no extroverted introvert. Okay, yep. I like yep. being around people, but I don't like to like engage. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could be at a party and I'd be in a corner by myself and just happy. And right. Lisa, I had a great time. <laughs> and a lot of times, people come up. What's wrong, man? You want to be here? I'm cool, man. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I ain't got a. I don't want to be the center. I'm cool. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. So, um. It can be difficult sometimes, I guess, when it calls to like network. Mm. Like when I gotta go and like talk to people cool. I don't know and all of this, it's like, I'm just kind of a hermit. I'm you incapable know? of networking. Yeah, I'm, I can, I'm and if I go to a mixer event and just for, I will not, I can't do it. I gotta have people with me and I just stay with my little Bruh, crew. it's it's humanly impossible for me to, hey man, what are you up to? And I do this, right. I wanna throw oh, up. Oh man, you remember we met at, oh, yeah, I get anxiety. Worst. I cannot do it. Now, if I'm at an event and people, it sound bad. If they know who I am, <laughs> you come and we could talk all day. Cause you, <laughs> if you come to me, I'm a, I got words for you. We right. can talk. But if it's just, I gotta like start it. It's bad. Like you know how people come up to the camera. Yo, what's up? Say yeah. yeah. Like, Yo, what's your boy? <laughs> you come to me with that. I'm just. What's you? <laughs> Please get that camera out my face. Like, is Melvin on camera if I don't have, like, a game plan? Or, like, right now you're asking me questions, so yeah. it's easy. I'm cool. But if it's just up to me, I don't know, man. It's weird. <laughs> but to answer the other part of your question, when did I realize? I was I realized it when I was 12. Um, I've always been self-conscious about, like, dancing and stuff where people looking at me. My friend had a birthday party. Uh, shout out Cardo. And, and, uh Enforcement. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's our London Oaks. We uh, he had a little birthday party. His cousins was there. They was older, and they wanted us to dance. Like, Hell no, I ain't dancing. People right. looking at me, I look silly. Yeah. Um, but we had masks, and we put the mask on. And when I got the mask on, I was like, dance fever. Right. I had all the moves. <laughs> I was like, I had, because it was like, I wasn't me anymore. Yeah. I had the mask to cover it up. And that's when I realized, like, okay, I could do this. If I don't have to be me, and that's what I find in acting, I'm never got myself. It. So yeah, I got the freedom. So that character that you portray is the mask, yeah, which allows you to be like, oh, that was that right. was that was just a character. I was in character. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now well, let's go back a little bit. You were in the projects growing up. Did that shape you in any way, creatively or personality wise? Um. Yeah, man. Is is is. I mean, everything I am. Like you grow up. Niggas roasting you all the time, so mm. you getting tough skin, which is important. Now you roasting back, you, you, you. Uh, some people get tougher, some don't. But right, <laughs> right. You get you get tough skin. You kind of, um, I guess one of the not so great attributes is uh, toxicity in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, whereas like I see my boys, I'm talking shit like most yeah, of the yeah, time, yeah. and I'm very cynical in a sense and. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, very independent to not really listening to people. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a lot of traits. I mean, I still hold them dear to my heart because it's, it's part of who I am. But uh, yeah, I was gonna say something else. I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to high school. You went to I C Norcom High School. What yeah. what were you? What was Melvin like in high school? Let us let us into the high school experience. All right. So uh, I had like the longest hair in the city. Okay. Yeah, my hair was like to my butt. Really? Yeah, I was known as Lil Melvin with the long hair. Um, Black people would like, give you, know you a nickname. Yeah, the one with the long hair. Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> and I was really small. Like, I didn't hit puberty until 
like 18 almost. Really? So I looked like a 12 year old for like six years. Oh wow. Like from 12 to like 17, I didn't grow. Um, not at all. My voice was, just, I was the exact same human. Oh my God. <laughs> really? <laughs> Physically, you know what I mean? I, I was mature and I felt my age, and um, but I just didn't look, like I look in the mirror, I'm like, God damn. <laughs> Like, I would go times not even looking in the mirror because, like, inside I was who I was. But when I look, I should suck my cheeks in, like, look older, nigga. So, uh, so it, 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 it definitely shaped me in a sense of I wasn't doing what everybody else was doing just because naturally, like, I didn't have the inclination to really chase women. My testosterone wasn't really there. You know what I mean? So it was like, y'all doing all of this to hang with her? Ugh, like I hate her. Um, <laughs> ugh, I still had to. Ugh, ugh, she got cooties. <laughs> You're 17, man. Ugh, you want to do what to her? <laughs> um, yeah. So in, in high school, I won't really like doing all of that. I kind of yeah. just stayed to myself. I was real quiet, but I was really observant because I didn't get nothing nobody was doing. So I was really just like yeah. analyzing people. Like you doing this? You. I should sleep through class all the time. Uh, quiet, well, introverted, sleep all the time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's why I was in school. Okay, so then you graduate high school and you go to Old Dominion mm -hmm. and you studied uh, marketing? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> you gotta pick something when you go, when you sign up. <laughs> oh, shit, I guess so. <laughs> oh my God, so you really was just- College was different. <laughs> Right. I'm going to tell you what happened between high school. I never studied anything, and I probably still had like a 3.7. It's like, this shit is easy. Yeah, I ain't yeah, distracted yeah. by nothing. Right, right. This is light work. Yeah. Um, College, between graduation and freshman orientation, I went from like 5'7 to like 6 foot. Mm. And testosterone hit. <laughs> My focus was different. <laughs> I understood why they was doing what they was doing. That's why you was with that girl. Not That's why. It had nothing to do with her. <laughs> oh, man, I got some catching up to do. <laughs> Boy. So, yeah, and I felt like I had catching up. I used to be teased. They were like, you a virgin. Ugh. Little Melvin ain't got no girls. I had a phone with no numbers in it. I just, I used to play Snake and just download music. Because I didn't get it. And then all of a sudden, puberty hit and it was like, Whoa. I said, okay, you got something for all of y'all. So I was on a mission um, and it wasn't scholastic. I'm going to tell you, I don't know if I ever said this. I decided to go to Old Dominion because this girl who was my friend, my eyes opened up to her differently and I heard she was going to this school. I said, okay. She's on my hit list. I'm going to go there, too. So, oh my God. mind you, she ain't even go. <laughs> she ain't even up going. <laughs> I'm at freshman orientation. I see another one. I said, oh, I need her. <laughs> I'm going to just follow her. She went and signed up for, like, oceanography and some other stuff. <laughs> Me, too. <laughs> Whatever. All right, cool. Let's take this. She ended up transferring a couple weeks later to a whole nother school. I'm like, man, whatever. I'm here, and it's a whole world of, like, women. Um, so I'm saying all of this to say I wasn't paying attention to what I was majoring in. Right. I just picked some shit. <laughs> and then when I – first it was, like, accounting. And I was like, oh, hell no. This econ ain't it. I ain't trying to do this. So I was like, management, you just tell people what to do, right? Yeah. When the management was jumping around, um, but yeah, it ain't. It ain't so in your ain't sophomore ain't. year, you take an acting class just yep. to fill out your schedule. Yeah. Okay. What was that like? Did did a light go off in your head, or 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 what? All right. So yeah, I need to fill my curriculum because I realized I had grants and stuff because I was smart in high school. Yeah. Um, if I get the grants to pay for this, and then I got financial aid because I'm poor, I get refund checks. <laughs> So this is my whole thing. Like, I need these college. refund checks, sign up for the class, and withdraw last minute. Ain't got to go. Um, so I will wait last minute, sign mm -hmm. up for my classes. And when you do that, sometimes nothing is left. 
And mm-hmm. I saw an acting class, and I was like, oh, that could be easy. Not really putting together, like, all the things I enjoyed to do on my strengths lend to acting. Yeah. I was like, oh, let me yeah. take this class. So when I was in there, I like, I would look forward to go to class. And outside of me liking it, I felt like I was good at it. Like, I've yeah. never been, like, really good at nothing like mm-hmm. outside of hustling. And that's yeah. not in the criminal sense. It's just right. buying for one dollar, selling for two. <laughs> I always had a, you know, what I mean, yeah. a, a thing for that. Um, that's why I thought I could take business yeah. management and shit. Anyway, um, but when I would come to class and like act, people would be having their phones out and stuff, and I was oh, like, word? oh man, like this might be it. My teacher had wrote on one of my papers was like, "You really good at this? If it's something you want to do, you should pursue it." So, yeah. Wow. So you didn't even think acting and, and Friday, you didn't even make the connection. I, I've never known an actor or knew anybody who knew an actor. I had never seen an actor in real life. Like yeah. outside of the C-list, washed up actors that come down to the Willet Hall, <laughs> that's like the auditorium in the yeah. middle school and put on these plays of why your mama slapped me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I ain't even. Oh. Um, but yeah, I never made the connection. We want to take a quick break from the show to tell you about Manscaped. Support from Coming to the Stage is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. That's Manscaped. They offer precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped recently launched the Ultimate Men's Hygiene Bundle, the Performance Package. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code STAGE at manscaped.com. If my math is correct, that's about 8 billion balls. Listen, I am a ball shaver myself. Usually once every two or three weeks, I shave uh, Harry and Reg. That's what I named them. You know, but before Manscaped, I used to trim my balls. And listen, I would cut and bleed and bleed and cut and cry. And you don't want to have sex with bleeding balls. Your wife's like, hey, man, your balls are bleeding. I'm like, I mean, don't worry about that. Focus on the shaft. But she can't focus on the shaft because the balls are bleeding. That doesn't happen with Manscaped. The Performance Package 4.0 by Manscaped has arrived. And, oh, man, is it a game changer. Inside this package, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, crop preserver, ball deodorant, crop reviver toner, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold your goodies for your goodies. The fourth-generation trimmer features a cutting-edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin-safe technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof and also has a 400K LED spotlight you need for a more precise shave. The performance package 4.0 also includes a weed whacker, nose and ear hair trimmer. The weed whacker is also waterproof and provides proprietary skin-safe technology, which helps reduce nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate nose holes. The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner will change the way you approach your hygiene routine. Trust me when I say this, fellas, your balls will thank you. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts in their Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shad Travel Bag. Bring your comfort in boxers to another level. It's time to take care of yourself, so go to manscaped.com and get 20% off and free shipping with the code STAGE. STAGE. Once again, get 20% off and free shipping with the code STAGE, stage. at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code STAGE. stage. Unlock your confidence. And always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. And now back to the show. Okay, so after college, you decide to move to L.A., right? So you had never lived outside of Virginia. Old Dominion's mm-hmm. in Virginia, right? And you you go in the cross country to a whole new world. What was that decision-making process like in that first couple months in L.A.? I want to say after college. Well, it was after college, but I didn't finish college. Oh, um, yeah. I had moved to Ohio freshman year. I quit school. Okay. Because it was a culture shock. Like, my middle school was, like, segregated. Elementary school, all black. Uh, high school, all black. Grew mm-hmm. up around all black people. And I got to college. It was real diverse, and I had, like, culture shock. Like, mm-hmm. I went to Rockaway. And these kids were like new balances and yeah. stuff. I'm like, this ain't like this world is weird. Um, so I dropped out, moved to Ohio, and was just selling weed. Mm. And I was like, this ain't it. It's cold up here. <laughs> <laughs> then I went back and went to school a little bit more, and then um, got locked up on some fluke stuff. Got set up by some cops, man. Mm. Racist cops set me up. Um, anyway, that got off because they had set me up. Uh, got out. Went to school for a little bit more, and I'm like, man, this ain't it. This ain't it. Yeah. I was actually in jail, and I was like, man, I want to act. And this dude, my cellmate, was like, man, you should do it. I said, you're right. I was doing everything else right, and I'm in here with you. 
I ain't even did nothing. I might as well just take a gamble. So when I got out, my plan was to go to LA to act. Wow. And so I, I left. Um, middle of my, I'm not going to say my senior year. It sounds better if I say I left my senior year, like high risk, but it was just like my fifth year. <laughs> I love how you, it sounded better, but it really was yeah, just the fifth year of attempting my college. Year. <laughs> I was probably like a credited sophomore, uh, maybe. So when you get to LA, is that another culture shock or did you assimilate pretty easily? I assimilated pretty easy because of college. Like mm. it was a culture shock in college. When I went back, I met a friend um, who was from Newport News mm -hmm. and he kind of had the best of both worlds because he grew up middle class, but his friends was from downtown. Yeah, He had friends that would come up there and hang out and he, you know, he showed me that, like, people pe are just people. I used to be intimidated to, like, even have a conversation with a white girl because she sounded proper, and I'm like, well, hell no. Yeah, yeah, I realized yeah. realized people are just people. Yep. Um, so when I moved to L.A., it was easier to assimilate. Mm. It was mm. still a different culture. Like, I had never met Mexicans before. Yeah. Um, yeah, and of course, when you come to L.A., this is Mexico. Right, right. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it was, it was cool. Okay, so now to distinguish yourself from, you know, everybody else, you – you start on Vine, right? Mm -hmm. And you were, <clears throat> how do I say this? There's like the OGs of YouTube, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Tim, Dormtainment, Issa Rae. You were like of the first group of popular Viners of any race, not just black Viners, like you, Batch, Hannah, this person, you guys were like it. Was it part of your plan to be like, let me make it in this or was it just something you did for fun? Like, how did you get into that? Nah, it was all by design. Okay. Uh, so I was out here acting, um, just working odd jobs. I, I did like this scam at colleges, selling hair salon promotions. Um, I used to hand out samples of drinks in front of the liquor store. <laughs> uh, I, I worked at Victoria's Secret. Um, <laughs> it was all I'm over the place. just putting on the panties, yeah. <laughs> I worked in a restaurant as a waiter. Very specific job. Um, yeah, I you was like panty selling panties. Duty. I was just censoring. <laughs> um, did all like working at four in the morning. I had like a bicycle I rode. It was it was bad. Um, but and as far as work, I could only get like student films and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I I started doing a little bit of commercials. It was cool, uh, a little bit of money, but it's like is enough to pay your rent. Then you gotta get another one, get right, another one. Cause right. now nah, union they buy you out most of the time. But I couldn't get an agent to get real jobs because I didn't have real credits, and I couldn't get real credits because I didn't have a real agent. Yep. And I'm going to all these auditions, and I'm like, nothing is really working. I'm doing these low budget movies. How can I ever get in a position where I want to be? Mm -hmm. And then financially too, it's like I've never been this poor as an ad <laughs> adult. And this rent here is different. It's different. <laughs> I would look at people driving down the street. And was like, wow, they afforded a car. Right. What are they doing different than me? And I'm on a bicycle. <laughs> Um, so I just kind of went to the drawing board. Like I said, I didn't pay attention in school, but I always had a, under, I've always been able to critically think and reverse engineer stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, what is it that, that is allowing people that are working to work? Um, what's working for them? And I remember looking at Lil Romeo. I used to follow him on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And every time I look, Romeo was on set somewhere. I ain't never see the movies come out. <laughs> but he was always on set. Like, why is he always on set? I can't get one gig. <laughs> I'm like, man. He went to so, ICDC College, bro, man. Oh, I'm like, something. He got it figured out, and I don't. And I was like, what does he have that I don't have outside of Master P? Um, <laughs> and then I was like, he has an audience. People know who he is. He was like mm. popping as a kid, Lil' Romeo show. Yep, yep. He has a built-in audience, so he's valuable to a production, more yep. so than me. I'm a nobody. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I gotta get an audience. And then around the same time, I did an indie film, um, and this girl in Virginia had hit me and was like, man, I wish I could do stuff like this. And I'm thinking, I got paid $500 for this movie. <laughs> and I was like, just do like Vine came out. I didn't even know how to work the front camera on it. Mm -hmm. I was like, do like Vine or something. Uh, you could do that at home. Yeah. She started doing it and she was blowing up like in three weeks she had like eight hundred thousand followers oh snap um, she was going crazy i'm like <laughs> and then she told me one time she got seven thousand dollars for a klondike um brand deal mm. seven thousand dollars i'm in an apartment with the window unit ac and four <laughs> oh. roommates on food stamps i said oh boy <laughs> let me figure this out <laughs> um and at the time it, you had like a uh, batch, man, it's Cerny, Day Storm, yeah, all of yeah. them was already popping. Like, batch had already had like a million followers. Um, 
Lele Pons, all of them. So I looked at what would pop on edge and I had never did comedy. Mm. Um, I reverse engineered what they did to yeah. understand comedy, to understand formats. Okay, this comes in sets of threes. Um, yep. Simple yep. comedy rule, everything builds up to the punch or it's a misdirection, you think is this, then boom, is that. Mm -hmm. Or it's shock factor or a slapstick, somebody walking and running to a pole is like, okay, cool, this is the stuff that these people think are funny. Right. So. <laughs> Let me, cause the audience was a different demo for me. It was young white kids um, yeah. in the suburbs. I'm like, this stuff ain't really funny to me. But if this is what works, <laughs> and this is the 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 biggest demo, cool. I can go and do like a little hood comedy. But the biggest hood comedian got like three thousand followers. That ain't gonna be it for me. So let me go to the biggest. This is my target demo. The biggest demo. So um, I started implementing what I knew into their formats. Um, wow. And it started working. Like for my first video, went on like World Star and got a little bit of virality to it. And I just and I had them stockpiled because I had drew up storyboards. I drew up like storyboards for like 30 videos. Oh, I shot like man. yeah, I shot like 20 of them. And I was like, all right, cool. The first one's gonna be all right because if they go to my page and it's heat, they see nothing else there. They're not gonna follow me. I'm not gonna have audience retention. They might just come to my page, but they're not gonna stay. So I was like, I'm gonna just drop a couple regular videos and then hit them with some heat. And then after that, hit him with some heat. And then a couple regular videos, like I had it all planned out. And um, I started doing it and it was catching fire. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, man, I'm not getting on the popular page because I don't have enough followers. And there's a ratio. You got to get a certain amount of likes in the first hour to hit the popular page. I can't do that with this many followers. So then I was like, let me put a team together like the Avengers. Of all, <laughs> I got all different demos. And we get together and we could post. And then everybody rebind that person. And then, mm. oh shit, it's a transformer. <laughs> Everybody rebound that person, and then we do the next person, do the next person, yeah, so we yeah. all get on. And that was my process to the point where I got big enough. With batching them, was like, they would hang with me then. I'm like, yeah. cool, all right. And then we just went to it. See, I think, <clears throat> I just want to pause here real quick. The, the, the amount of foresight, preparation, dedication, understanding, like, I think a lot of times people, I'm not saying about you, but people just think, oh, you just was throwing some stuff up there. And that is the case for some people. Like, yeah. I just did it and I didn't really have no plan. But, like, you was like, here's my goal. What I'm doing is not achieving this. So let me try this way. And then even within that, you're like, okay, what, what I'm doing is not achieving that. You know what I'm saying? So you really like, okay, boom, 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 boom. And then in a short amount of time, it starts working. And then you like, so as you're popping, are you like, boom, now I should be in movies? Or are you just like, oh, let me see where this goes? Because Vine, if you guys don't know, it was very lucrative. Now, I worked at All Def during the time that Vine was super popular. And I remember giving a Viner a brand deal. It was 30 grand for six seconds, six and a half seconds, how long Vines were. And she was like, oh, perfect. This will take me five minutes to make. And I threw up in my mouth because I was like, dang. That, but because you're paying for the audience, you're not paying for her for how long it takes her to make this video. You're right. paying for for all the work she already did. Mm -hmm. So when you start getting that success, are you like, dang, maybe I should go this route? Or you always knew you were gonna come back to acting? Yeah, I didn't know. I, I always wanted to come back to acting. I never wanted to be like, I wanted to get to a level. I had got caught up, not caught up in it, but we was making videos every day. Mm -hmm. And it was to the point where I'm just competing with my friends for the number one spot on the popular page. Me, they storm back, Shalene, yeah. all us. And it's like, okay, boom, I hit the popular page today. Oh, you got some heat, boom, I hit the popular page. So we competing for number one, number two, number three on the spot, not realizing that this is number one, number two, number three out of like tens of millions of people. Mm -hmm. Like we're not even looking at these people as numbers. It's like, oh, I can get 15,000 followers a day. I can get 20,000 followers a day. We like everything is strategy and you kind of get caught up in the numbers not realizing the impact mm -hmm. um that you're creating and uh i was there for a minute and then of course you start realizing how you can monetize it so you start working towards that and i remember making a conscious decision early on like before i had a million followers on um, vine to stay true to what i thought was funny because i wanted to build my brand in a way where i could segue out um mm -hmm. and i remember talking to other people and i was like nah i do cookie cutter not cookie cutter stuff but more um, brand friendly stuff. Like yeah. stop cursing, stop kicking babies. Like the stuff I thought was funny, <laughs> they was like, you can't do. Kicking babies. So I'm thinking to myself, <clears throat> if I do what they tell me to do, anybody can do that. Yeah. And I might make money now, but I'm just like, I could be replaced. Yeah. If you made me, you can make another me. So yeah. let me just stay true to what I think is funny. I might not make the most money um, right now, but 
it'd be cool later later on. So uh, that's what I did, making money. But the goal was always to get out. Uh, but I wanted to make enough money where I could comfortably get out and I don't have to act for money. Right. Want to take a quick break from the show and tell you about HelloFresh. You get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh has fit and wholesome recipes for satisfying and nutritious meals that you can feel good about with six recipes per week to choose from, including low calorie and carb conscious options. Listen, I'm a very busy man. I'm shooting this podcast ad while also on a five minute break from another show that we're shooting. When I go home, I need to exercise and then have dinner. Do I have time to go to the grocery store? No. Do I have time to go on Pinterest and look up recipes? No. Am I sick and getting my dinner delivered and paying high price stuff for something that was cooked three hours ago and is sweaty? Yes. And that's why I have HelloFresh. Customize your favorite dishes with the new Hello Custom offerings by swapping out one protein or side for another, upgrading for a more luxurious experience and even adding protein to a veggie meal. That means more choices, more variety, and even more meals truly tailored to you. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week. Green Chef is now owned by HelloFresh. And with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. I love switching between the brands, and my listeners can enjoy both brands at a discount conmigo. That means with me. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Stage 16. Stage 16. And use the code Stage 16. Stage 16. For up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Stage 16. Stage 16. And use code Stage 16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. America's number one meal kit. And now, back to the show. Right, right, right. Because he was still having the same problem with booking that you would have had, except now you have an audience. This another thing, too. A lot of people think you get an audience, you're going to start being an actor. The biggest Instagrammers, TikTokers, Viners in the world aren't acting. Right. Not seriously acting. Right. They not, you know, your Timothy Chalamet's, Michael B. Jordan's, or whoever it is you you following. Like, is they might get a cameo in something. Mm -hmm. You know, they might get an opportunity. They might do some, like, Disney stuff. Uh, but it's not doing, like, acting acting yeah 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 you know what i mean so yeah. that's another thing i had to realize that the numbers aren't gonna get me what i want mm -hmm. it's just gonna it might get me some attention it got me an agent because yeah. when you make money then people want to come and yep. you know hop on board and i could use this leverage these agents to kind of get these opportunities to audition but every role i've had outside of freakish which was horrible um <laughs> sorry to the freakish fans <laughs> It is what it is. Um, every role after that, though, I had to audition for all of my roles. Nothing was given to me for an audience. I didn't even know who I was. Wow. So do you ever look back and be like, what, what was the point of all that? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, I know the point. It, it put me in a, a financial position where I don't have to because mm. acting money ain't good. Acting mm. money trash until you the guy or the girl. Really? Like, what? Was was Vine more lucrative than your early acting Hell career? Hell yeah. Yes. Really? Yes. You could do a Vine, like you said, 30K, 40K, 50K. It take you five, 10 minutes to do. You could do a movie. If it's non-union, you might look at $3,000 for the whole movie, and it took you six, week to, six weeks to film it. Dang. I recently did a movie where I got $10,000 for the whole movie. Wow. And it's like, I could have I, I got that for a tweet. <laughs> I ain't even shooting you a Vine for 10K. You get a tweet. Maybe a story with no tag. <laughs> oh, not no tag. But with movies, you got to kind of sacrifice for the greater good. Wow. Ain't hey, kids. Yeah, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know. So now I remember you was like doing videos, doing videos, and then you stopped. Mm -hmm. And it felt like it was like, like Abrupt. stopped. I mean, like, I would. I remember looking like, man, I ain't seen nothing from Melvin in a minute. And it was, oh, no, they, he ain't been making stuff in a minute. What what happened in that in that time period? Take us back to your what were you thinking at that time? So um, I always been mindful to hop off of things before the boat sink. Okay, I want to hop off when I'm at a high, so I could transition that into something else. Like I left Vine and went to Instagram when I was popping on Vine. I don't want to give myself a chance to fall off. Yeah, um, yeah. And I was at a height on social media. I started on Facebook when Facebook monetization came yep. around. Um. I had a couple shows going. I had my own version of the Kev on stage studios. I had like a 4,000 square foot warehouse. 
Um, I built sets, I built offices, mm -hmm. had green screens, had all of this stuff, uh, equipment. And I just wasn't happy, man. I was just working constantly, um, but I wasn't happy. And when I would get the things that I was working towards thinking it would make me happy, it wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I was, from Facebook, I was getting six figures a month, um, like checks. I never looked at, nobody in my family ever made this type of money. I'm making it per month. Yeah. It hit my account and I'm not happy. It's like, I don't care. Um, I think the the month before I quit, I quit um, December 2017. Um, the month before that, I did 100,000, 100 million views per week for four weeks straight. All original content. I'm not taking video. All original content. Um, four weeks straight, 100 million views a week. And I was I was like the fastest growing channel on Facebook. My Facebook audience had grew bigger than any other audience. But I just wasn't. I was depressed. Mm. I was sitting in my office with no windows all day, just like editing and like this ain't it, man. This ain't what I came here to do. I didn't yeah. got caught up. I don't want to get lost here and miss an opportunity. So I was like, I'm done. No more videos. And like I'm very analytical with stuff. I'm like, if I want to be seen as an actor. I can't do videos. I created this this beast here as a social media guy. I have to supersede that with my as an actor. Mm -hmm. I can't catch up if I continue to do this. Right. Like, I'll never catch up. So I just stopped. Um, this is December. Just focus on acting. And like January 2018, the next month, I booked American Vandal and High Flying Bird. And then from there, it's just like, dog, <laughs> not the, the next month? The next month. At the same time, I shot those at the same time. Wow. And I realized too, like, I gotta commit to this. I can't be half in, half out. I can't be on set trying to shoot vines and mm -hmm. I'm not focused on what I'm doing. Yeah. So I just focused locked in and like, you know, New York Times called me a comedic genius for American Vandal. High Flying Burger, I'm working with Steven Soderbergh and all of this. So I was like, all right, this is the recipe. Let me just stick to this. I mean, I as a as a creator, I was like, oh, Melvin Gregg on Netflix. I mean, it wasn't you, it was just, the, you were the the person in American Vandal. You yeah. the you you the guy. You is, you number one on the call sheet. I wasn't, but you were number it looked one. that way. That's how, the, I was guest star. Really? That's the technicalities of this industry, man. The only people who were, uh, Leads was the two people that was behind the camera because oh they had came from the first season. I didn't even think about Everybody that. else was guest star, so that means I'm getting paid minimum for it. And your name is you is the cutout. I'm on on the vandal, the, but that's the sacrifice you got to make because the world don't know that. They just see like, oh, he's popping. So perception is reality. The people don't know don't know better. Um, so it's cool. I'm a lead. So now other projects are looking at it like he's a lead. The audience looking at me like he's a lead. So that's mm. more important than not being a lead and getting paid more money. Fantastic point. And you said, everybody don't know that, I'm everybody. Cause <laughs> I was like, his name is, he is in the flyer. He is yeah. in the stuff. Therefore he, but I totally forgot the two people are the people doing the investigation. They doing the investigation. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So 2018, you 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 make TV Guide's freshman 15 list of breakout stars. What did that, what did that feel like? It's cool. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I came out here on a mission. Like, I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, yeah. freshman 15, it's 2018, I've been here since 2011. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's about, all right, cool. I got more to do. Like, freshman 15, cool. Somebody's opinion. I'm not booking it. Like, I got work to do. Like, yeah. The same way I would just ask you, do you ever sit back and reflect at your studio? And you was like, uh, yeah, but I got, I got work to do. That's, that's how yeah. I felt. Like, all right, cool. Okay. Let's keep moving. I get it. Yeah. Okay, so now you, you've done a couple big things already, and mm -hmm. then you book Man Boy, mm -hmm. right, in Snowfall, right? And, bruh, just fan to actor. I mean, brilliant work. Thank you, man. Brilliant work. I mean, I was like, whoo. Like, I knew you and knew of you, but when I watch you as Man Boy, I'm like, I don't know this man at all. This man is a gangster drug dealer killer. Who's deceptive, and Melvin is that nice father who builds gardens. <laughs> you know what I mean. So I, I've read that you like to ground your characters in reality and some mm -hmm. parts of yourself. Uh, what what parts of you did you connect with to to make Man Boy so 
you know, complex and real and vivid. Mm, thank you, man. You're uh, welcome. <laughs> it was it was a lot, man. Man Boy was important to me because coming from Vine, I had to do a lot of stuff that I didn't think was great, but it worked for the audience. Mm-hmm. Spinning women in circles, like <laughs> right. I had to be somebody. The stuff on Vine was a further stretch than any acting job I've had. Mm. Like the like, if you know me, I'm not doing this. Over, like I'm introverted. I'm not running and running into walls. And you got to be big and loud on Vine because you got yeah. six seconds. So a lot of the stuff I didn't like to do, but I realized it had kind of framed me a, a certain way in the in the eyes of like our culture. Yeah, black yeah. people, black he goofy, he silly. Like mm. and I'm like, that's not me. Like corny people telling me I'm corny is frustrating. <laughs> Like, what? <laughs> but it's nothing I could say. I'm not tweeting everybody back. You're right. So it's like, all right, cool. If I could sell these people on me being man boy, it would like eliminate the goofy vine stuff. It's gonna be harder because they already oh, yeah. got a perspective of me. Yeah. Perception of me. So it's gonna be harder. But I'm willing to do the work. And it's like I'm from Portsmouth. Like this is this is I grew up around this. Like mm. every this is my reality. Mm-hmm. Um people around me, my dad, my mama. Everybody, so and I always, as a kid, I would always thought I would be the best gangster. <laughs> I'm like, man, I could be cold hearted, I could be manipulative, I could be strategic, like I'm smarter than most of these people. I could be an amazing gangster, yeah. but I do not want to go to jail. <laughs> the concept of jail to me, I still, I got one life. You want to take like 10, 15, 20 man. years of that life? I come out and got us, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me steal clear. Um, but in this, I had an opportunity to be this gangsta I feel like I could be. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the parallels was just like me coming into a show. I was a big fan of Snowfall. Yeah. I met Damson Idris in London the year prior as a fan. Um, I had reached out on Instagram. I was like, yo, you killing it from season one. So when I saw him in London, it was love because he was a, people don't know, Damson used to do Vines in London. So, really? Yeah, and he's funny too. People don't know it, but uh, he got rid of all his shit. But <laughs> what? So Vine? he, yeah, <laughs> Vine. What's Vine, bro? <laughs> so he, uh, he was like, nah, yeah, I used to do stuff. I used to watch his stuff. It, so it was just a mutual love. But I'm looking at it like, man, you used to watch my stuff. Now you on TV like I want to be. I should be there, man. Like this yeah. is what I'm thinking. Yeah. And then coming into the show, I'm a fan of the show. I know the whole world. Cause I've been watching it. Man, boy comes in and he's looking at Franklin like I should be the guy. Like I was doing this, I was yeah. this guy in high school. You was a nerd. Not saying I seen Damson. No, no, yeah. Like, but it's like Franklin Shane was a nerd. Mm-hmm. I could do this. And then you come into a world, don't nobody know you. Man, boy come into a world where he don't know Frankie and, and Jerome and yeah. uh, the fuck is Frankie, Franklin, <laughs> Jerome, uh, Louis. Um, Leon, and he came in with a confidence, like, whatever. Even though he might have been scared, it was just that confidence. And that's what I had to do coming to set on my first day. Like, I'm a little nervous, but I gotta, I just got to be confident and, yeah. and, and, and own it. And, yeah. So what was it like to work on a show that you were a fan of that is, like, black folks love? Like, Snowfall is one of the few shows left, at least in my timeline, that if you're not wa- if I can't watch Snowfall in real time, I have to be off Twitter because yeah. it's gonna get spoiled for me, and that's not the case for very m- many shows anymore. But what was it like to book a show that you were a fan of that also everybody black is really rocking with? Right. That's also an amazing piece of work yeah. that we all like appreciated. Was that like, dang, okay, this is what I came here for? The audience didn't really. It, it wasn't that big season coming off of season two. Mm. Like it was kind of slept on. It, it got big recently, like season four mainly. But I was a fan, which is all that matters. And I was telling my agents, I want to play a villain. I always wanted to play a villain. Mm. And I never cast or get auditioned for villains because it's like, oh, a little light-skinned, curly-haired boy. <laughs> this nigga ain't scary. <laughs> the fuck they got to do with anything? <laughs> what does that mean? Like, it, was, it always frustrated me because I was never that guy like, all right, whatever. Um, This trope, I hate it. <laughs> light-skinned trope. I'm going to turn it all upside down. Um, so I was like, give me a villain, give me a villain. <laughs> and um, coming in, being a fan of the show, I understood where I could work in. 
Mm. What could make sense for me to do? How I could be a villain? Like, yeah. it's different type of villains. If you were, if you were ugly villain, you just got rage because nobody really liked you. They look at you different. People got shorter tolerance with ugly people. They overcome. <laughs> it's it's different. But if you were someone of, I'm not gonna say favorable looks. I'm just being real right now. <laughs> it's a different type of cockiness. You got a different type of like swag. Like you still want to be fresh, but at the same time, you gotta show people that you ain't no punk. Ah, and it's like, that's how man boy would be. Yeah, that's how man boy would be. I'm not gonna come in and try to do a version of like some gangsta scene on TV because that's not who man boy would be. Yeah, man boy is still who he is. Um, he would just be affected. He would have a different experience. Yeah, he would be a different type of game. So you look in the mirror like I'm not ugly, so I gotta go. I gotta. I gotta earn my respect. And but from that point of view, I don't want to overcompensate either. I don't want to. Yeah. Like, Shut up, nigga. <laughs> nigga. You don't look scary right. in the sense of what people call scary. Yeah. But if you come in, you just like you look untrustworthy. That's a little scarier. If people mm. don't know what you about to do next, you got a smile on your face. Mm-hmm. You, move you just in a moved way. a little bit into it right it's there. It's like you it's see just, It's a different type of intimidation. You shifty. People can't trust shifty people. <laughs> like what you shifting for? Shifty Stand people. straight up and be and be yeah. be still. And so, um, that was my that was my goal with Man Boy. And another thing too, just understand the TV. The villain got to be a reflection of the hero. Mm. And if you pay attention. Man Boy's a lot like Franklin. And even how it's written, like, Franklin and I have an experience, and Man Boy had the same experience. They had the same blow-ups. Like, even within the same episode, you would see mm. him blow up, you would see me blow up, but mine's just a little more like, you still want to trust him and love him. Mm-hmm. Mine is like, oh, I ain't trusting him. But it's the same thing. Like, yeah. they, do, they really do the same thing. They got the same ambitions. Yeah. It's just one is a little more hardened. And uh, one is a little more redeemable. I just have one more question. This is spoiled. If you ain't seen this by now, I don't know where you've been. Man Boy's death scene was one of my favorite death scenes in all of television. Oh, Because he you. really was still, I am dying and you still weak. Like, how did you, I mean, he was Man Boy till his last, like, how did, what were you, what was in your mind when you were, when you were playing that, that part of it? Um... So I knew I was going to die, right? I went off and left to Australia. They had a whole production for me for six months. They was like, they're killing me. Um, <laughs> killing me off. Uh, so I just asked the showrunner, David Andrew, I'm like, bro, let me go out in a blaze, man. I wanted to go out shooting people. Mm. Um, but I, I love what he allowed me to do. Um, with this this little monologue at the end where he still it's not like a pop he dead like right. let me get something off my chest um, and I just came from shooting non perfect strangers working with like all these a list movie stars mm-hmm. so I came out with a different little confidence uh, I was able to get in the rhythm because I shot six episodes in five days like I said they had to wait for me so when I came back it was just my stuff I shot the last six episodes, five days, something like that. Mm. Um, so I, I was able to get in the rhythm with it, where it's like, I'm stuck in Man Boy right now. It's, I'm not, mm. I don't have to get out. Um, and then <laughs> I did this, I did this YouTube video called uh, Different Denzels, like mm-hmm. the best Denzel scene. Mm-hmm. And I played the Training Day Denzel. Yeah, I remember and this. The training day Denzel, it was like Denzel really never don't die. Like he shot, ah, oh, you motherfucker, you shot me in my ass. Ah, oh, you can shoot me, but you can't kill me. Like I'm, it's like he shoot me and I'm just still talking shit the whole time. So it was like, I've been here. I've done yeah. this in a comedic sense. Just take the comedy out. Uh, and it's, it's, it's similar scenes. And it was just, wow, it really is. It's, it's similar scenes. And I was like, cool, but it wasn't like, Ah, uh, method. Don't nobody talk to me. I hate y'all. It's like, mm. nigga, we joking between takes. I had I had one take I did, and I'm sitting there like bloody. I had one take I did. I'm talking to uh, Amy. I'm like, can I fuck Louie, nigga? Like, <laughs> <laughs> your nephew, bitch, and I fuck you, bitch. I'm, I, I'm talking to Leon. I'm like, yo, fat ass homeboy. My sister carved that fat pudgy nigga up. <laughs> Franklin, your stupid ass cripple walk. <laughs> Get your handicap sticker, nigga. Like I'm just joking between. They like holding in laughs and like 
<laughs> that was the energy. Um, oh man, it was just loose and relaxed and directed to this thing. Man, you got but congratulations to you because of that. I mean, you obviously going to go on and do amazing things, but Thanks, like man. to be in something that that is in the zeitgeist, you've done that already. Like you don't do nothing else. You know, I, I imagine you're doing great things. I'm glad we got you now. Because when you, nah, we, man, when you get up on that I'm Oscar, when you get up on that Oscar nah, stage, back. hey, I'll bring it with me. Cam, Marquita, Cam, send it to me. Cut it out when, <laughs> when Melvin was on. <laughs> but uh, but but you've done a what, what what I would consider a classic thing. Like you've done a, a classic thing, and you and you held your own. Not only held your own, you you were you were. I mean, the star of that season. Great season, oh, great you, show. Like that's amazing. But let's continue because you did more stuff. So what was it like working Andre Day in in the highly acclaimed United States versus Billie Holiday? Andre's amazing, bro. She uh, when I met her, she was in character. Uh, we were on set, and then we decided to uh, link up and just kind of just go have dinner, just kind of get to know each other a little bit, who mm -hmm. we are. Mm -hmm. um, and she's just like a Cali girl, just hella chill. Yeah. Just cool, relaxed. And I just realized how committed she was to the character. She lost so she lost a lot of weight. Mm-hmm. Mind you, Andrew Day is like a I think what Grammy nominated singer. Like yeah. she's not just a she has an image. She's yeah. successful in what she does. And she's an amazing singer. And for her to commit to the point where she's losing weight, she cut all her hair off. Yeah. She didn't drink at all, but she started drinking just to kind of feel who Billy was with smoking cigarettes and mm. stuff like she doesn't do. Yeah. Um, so she don't do it. Just seeing her commitment and on set, how far she's willing to go to get the shot and how much of herself that she's willing to just kind of push to the side and just be Billy. Yeah. You know I mean, she's not a vain actress. Like she's not conscious of trying to look pretty scene. She's committed. Yeah. And to, to see like all of the accolades she got, I'm so happy because I know how much work she put into it. And she had never acted before. That's and to go to a space crazy, like that. Man. She do, doing dialect coaching for like a year. It was just man. Did that inspire you to be like I mean, cause you already worked hard, but were you even more like, dang, I gotta like this is what it takes, or are you like I'm already on that path? No, nah, I'm willing to go as far as I need to go. Really? Um, and yeah, with something I have to do. It's things okay. I won't do. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah. Anything I allow myself to do, I'm willing to go to the wall. So just to, so I have respect from for seeing it. It's like, oh, you you willing to go that ma that extra mile too? Yeah, yeah. This is what it takes, and to see you do it and to get it, it's like, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's how it's done. So you've done the way back with Ben Affleck to Nine Perfect Strangers with, I mean. Hollywood A-listers, which both showed your range. Uh, were you were you be on set like, bro? I'm out here too, or are you like a little bit like, whoo, this is crazy on set. Yeah. Um. Nah. Is I got a problem with not like really just enjoying the moment. Mm. It's like I'm here with a job to do. Really? Um, yeah. I got a job to do. I got a. I gotta get it done. I can't fall short now. Yeah, like, you know yeah. I mean? You don't make it to the league, and then all of a sudden you you relaxed. I say that all the time. Like these kids watch LeBron in high school, right? And then they play with him. But if you don't guard him, he will dunk on you. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? You did all this to get dunked on. <laughs> I'm not about to get dunked on. I'm putting in extra hours. Yeah. Um, but not working with these people is always a great experience because. I'm always looking for opportunity to grow and, and just kind of learn and mm -hmm. um, stuff on camera and off camera. Because a big part of this stuff is how you manage the success and how you balance out your real life and, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, stuff like that. So I'm always anxious to ask these type questions. Acting is kind of hard to ask someone their process or how they do it because everybody's process is different. Mm -hmm. But you can look at somebody discipline on set. You can see things that they do that you like yeah. um, and things you can adopt from there. So I'm always down to do that. And then too, if I'm if I get tight enough with somebody, I'm always willing to I mean, I'm always gonna ask questions if they got something for me. Cool. Yeah, if not, yeah. cool. So how do you choose because you your your movies and, and stuff has been movies and TV has been very different. How do you ch choose like what's your process to choosing a project? I mean, being real with you, I'm not in a position where they giving me I got like which one I want to do. Right. I'm still auditioning. Right. Nigga, if they hire me, I'm, I might just do it. Um, I mean, but there's there's things I won't audition for. It's like, 
like coming out the gate for like two years, all I was playing was a basketball player. Mm -hmm. I did American, well, Freakish, I was a basketball player. American Vandal, I was a basketball player. Um, High Flying Bird, I was a basketball player. The Way Back, I was a basketball player. It was like, all right, I guess I looked the part, but I'm not just trying to be typed as, as a basketball player. Yeah. Especially playing young. It's, it's so much of yourself. You gotta, uh, you can't really show a lot of emotional ranges as, as a teenager. Yeah, Because yeah. teenagers are kind of like, they don't know a lot. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, so yeah, I had to stop playing basketball players and then Man Boy was a good transition. But then for like the next two years, since Man Boy, you know, it was, oh, he's a gangster, he's a gangster. He's a gangster. I could never be a gangster before. <laughs> now I'm the go-to gangster. <laughs> I played every type of gangster since Man Boy. I was in Black AF, I was a comedic gangster, the retired modern day crip. Um, I was in Dave as a, a inmate. Uh, I just did, uh, I did a uh, house party, mm -hmm. gangster in that, a deranged gangster. <laughs> I just did this uh, movie called The Black in It where I'm like a renowned gangster. I used to be a gangster back in the day and now I changed my life. I'm like, all right, that's it. So no more gangsters, no more basketball No more players. basketball. I might could go back to basketball now because I've shown I could do more than that, depending on if it's the right thing. Mm. Um, Space Jam 3 or something, I don't know. But uh, yeah, no, no more gangsters right now, man. So let's talk about your life off the screen. You mm -hmm. are... Uh, Relatively new father. We we're just talking off screen. You cut your son's hair yeah. for the first time. You active father in in your life. What is that like? The new father glow. How how has your son you know changed your life? Man, is is you got kids. You know how it mm -hmm. is. It's, it's everything. Um, like I said before, I'm very strategic and overthink stuff. But this is how I planned my life. Okay. Uh, I planned to have my first child at 32. Um, I benchmark like my career and stages and I've hit each one uh, so far. The next one is at 35. But uh, yeah, I plan to have my son at this age. Around 29, 30, I was ready. But I'm like, nah, 32 is the year I'm going to have my first son. <laughs> um, don't go against the grain now. Right. Um, but I had already, I was, you know how sometimes people have a child and it, it forces you to get your stuff in order. Mm -hmm. My stuff was already in order. Mm -hmm. I was, I had already gotten mindset. I'm not trying to, I was already playing house. Yeah. Um, I'm not trying to go out, be around a lot of people, club, all of this type of stuff. I'm in a good head space. So he came at a, a perfect time, man. I never thought I would have a son. Like my dad has six six daughters and he 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 happened to get me, but he had to try five times, six <laughs> times. Again. Right, right. I'm second to the youngest. Uh, my fiance, her her dad is just has three girls. Like my son has no uncles. Wow. Um, so I'm like, man, I'm a I'm scared. I'm gonna just have girls. Nothing wrong. With girls, but it's yeah. Like, oh, I never thought I would get a boy, and I got him, man. And he's like the perfect perfect kid. No offense to nobody else's kids. Yeah, my but kids are cool. I, yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> right now he's he's hitting it out of the park. Hopefully he don't turn into a fuck up. But right now <laughs> he's good. Like I got a good one. I'm also interested in you as like a, you are amazing with your hands. Like I watch your video, you build dog houses and Thank you. structures. Like, was that always your thing or you just got interested in it? Like, nah. what is that? So how I got into it um, was when I had my studio. Mm. Um, it was deemed the arc. That's what my friends would call it because every day they would see me in their building. Like I was <laughs> Noah, like I'm in there with wood, Cause I didn't have a lot of, I didn't want to spend a lot of money on building stuff. So yeah. I was like, if I learn how to build these offices, I could do the same thing with cheaper wood and build sets. So mm -hmm. now I'm not depending on nobody. So like I built these offices. So I learned how to frame. I learned how to, you know, put in insulation, how to do drywall, how to run electrical. <laughs> um, and I had a, a my, my sound guy, James Hatchet. He knows how to do everything. Like mm. right now, I think he, he flies like the little helicopter, like the little planes with the fans, like, that Mo had in the Simpsons when he said, "Yeah, him. yeah, yeah, yeah." Um, he does it all, but he knew a, he knew a, he knows a little bit about everything, and, and he helped me. Um, kind of gave me the 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 basics, fundamentals mm -hmm. of building. So from there, I was like, "Oh, I, I like this." So when I got a house, it's like, "No, nah, I know how to do this. I know how to do that." Yeah. And then if I don't know how to do it, I look on YouTube. Bro, it is such a blessing to have YouTube. YouTube University. Bruh, you can literally learn how to do. Everything, anything, yeah. On YouTube, I was I was telling my wife, I was like, I should teach my son how to tie a tie because how will they know? And they were like, 
you what do? What do you mean, how would I know? It's just YouTube how to tie a tie. It's how to a change million tie. results. <laughs> Literally, there's no reason for you not to know. Yeah. Now, you can't blame that for not having a dad. <laughs> so you've had a good, you it's know, career crazy. so far. <laughs> what what do you what would you like the rest of your career to look like? The next five, ten, fifteen years, twenty years. Um I really it sounds cliche. I want to retain my happiness and my balance. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I like I don't wanna attach my happiness to career uh achievements. Mm -hmm. Um learned that from Will Smith and a lot of other actors watching I, the Hollywood reporter. And uh, you bet. got a nice pick with Oh, yeah. yeah. We worked yeah. together a couple yeah. times, met a couple um, times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple good picks now. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I, I want to, you know, keep keep my focus on my family first. Yeah. That's where my happiness really lies. Like, I've seen it with social media that I can't attach my happiness to these things. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to continue to work and I want access to the projects that I want to do to the point where I can lay it out. I'm like, this is what I want to do. But I want to continue to uh, diversify my roles. Yep. And I don't want any weak, link, weak links, man. I want to be able to do everything and anything. Um, I don't want to just be a one-note actor who yeah. just does this. I want to be able to do it all. But right now, my focus is to you know, save the world or get the girl. <laughs> Back to college, old to me and you. No, nah, not in real life on screen. <laughs> no, I know. Same. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's what your college thing was. Right, right. At least get the girl. That's the will. That's the will recipe. Yeah. You get the girl to say the world. That's it. Or both. All right. Mm -hmm. Last part of our interview, Kev's top ten. We ask every Ooh. guest to answer ten questions. All we ask you answer authentically. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number one, who's your favorite person? My son. Mm, that's a good answer. Number two, what's one of your happiest moments? My son hugs me. Mm, ain't that it, though? Man, when they just hug you all tight and lay their head on your chest, it's just like, man. Is it? Oh. My yeah. sons used to do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's one of your saddest moments? I try to make it a game. <laughs> on three, you run at me. Oh, you ready? One? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Your saddest moment. One of them. When I lost my son's mother the first time. You lost her? She didn't die. Oh. <laughs> still here. Um, nah, she she left me. She won't she ain't, she ain't wanna parts of me. Oh. Yeah. And she's back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. All right. Grits. Sugar or salt and pepper? I don't eat grits. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> this like ain't this like a you and uh, Tony Baker rivalry? Yeah, this is me and a lot of people, yeah. but Tony Baker is my my arch nemesis, arch when, nemesis it comes to when it comes to grits. <laughs> Sweet potato pie or pumpkin pie? I don't eat either. I would say sweet potato pie because I like candy yams. Okay, that's fair. It's just that's candy fair. yams with crust, right? That's all it really is. Yeah. <laughs> Anita Baker or Patty Labelle? <laughs> <laughs> is she still got you blocked? No, that was Tony. That was Tony? She, she would she never do that Tony. to me. She blocked Tony. He's he's good now. Uh, I'm a, I'm gonna go Patty Labelle. Ah, I feel like it's just being contrary. Patty now. pies. Yeah. <laughs> Patty pies that you don't eat. Oh uh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> I appreciate her entrepreneurship. <laughs> Favorite black saying. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> That means so much. You can say it so many ways. <laughs> That's hilarious. And then it's ours. You yes. It. Yeah. All right. What excites you? Um. Uh, nothing career-wise. I don't get it. Excitement. This sounds sad. Excitement leads to, like, disappointment. Mm. Um, I mean, my son. Your son is a big part. Yeah, he's my answer. He's like my universal <laughs> answer. He's my go-to. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, my son. What bores you? A lot. Uh, not having anything to do. Mm. Like, I can't just sit still. I fall asleep. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't just sit still, man. All right. And last one, what do you want your legacy to be? Man, this has changed. Okay. You know, at one point, I wanted to be assassinated. 
Really? This is before I decided I wanted a family. I was like, I want to be so powerful and so influential that America would have to kill me like they did my heroes. Um, wow. And I wanted to get assassinated by like 45. But yeah, I don't want that life anymore. <laughs> you got the son now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen a different, you know, um, my legacy. I I really want to create a performance art school back home. Oh, that's yeah, dope. Yeah, like I said, I never knew an actor, knew anybody knew an actor. It's, it's not looked at as a, a career goal, career yeah. path, and there's nothing there to kind of bring it out. There's not really any programs or arts programs or after school. Like, yeah. even theater in school was just a free block. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, I'm not an exceptional guy. I just had an opportunity and kind of pursued it. This is a million me's back home with the right. same experiences, same things to draw from and I just want to provide an opportunity for you know people to dream a little bigger that is a noble effort yeah man that is life-changing to create opportunities for people yeah that's all man if I can you know impact people that way wow man especially something. people back home yeah, yeah seven cities mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen Melvin Gregg you Thank can you, find man. him where at Melvin Gregg is everywhere, right? Yes, man. Oh, I stopped doing that a long you time don't, ago. You know, 2017. If you didn't know him by then, then who cares? You follow me at <laughs> follow me at imdb.com. They care enough, check, they'll find it. Check, it check the dope. credits out. Oh, uh, but he's been fantastic. We're looking forward to everything you've been shooting, making. Watch him on Netflix, Hulu, FX. Search Google. They you will find me. Ain't it. no FX no more. Eh? It's no oh, more. Hulu. Dead. Oh, it's like Hulu on FX. It, oh, yeah. FX ain't really standalone. It got to be. Oh, you talking about Snowfall? Yeah, they killed me, man. Well, if you ain't seen them, go back and watch it. <laughs> you know? But uh, thank you so much, ladies and nah, gentlemen. Thanks, so uh, Melvin Gregg. If you would like to watch the ad-free versions of this show, watch it on Kevin Stage Studio Streaming Services. Otherwise, you can catch the podcast wherever podcasts are found: YouTube, Facebook, all that jazz. I've been Kevin Stage. You've been Melvin Gregg. You've been you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace. Thank you, man.